everybody! Wow, what a crazy day this was. Today is kind of like, the last, I'd say, 12 hours kind of perfectly encapsulate what's going on in Hollywood right now. And I want to speak to that first before we get into today's stories, etc. So, uh, I think you're seeing, you know, some people are calling it superhero fatigue, uh, but I'd say that you are seeing a lack of interest in a, a lot of the content that Hollywood is putting out. It's pretty shocking, in fact. Uh, and I think it's for uh, two reasons. Uh, I think that, you know, a lack of risk taking and I think a lot of mediocrity and a lot of the content that's being put out is uh, especially the big blockbusters that are supposed to drive the conversation are, um, you know, I think it's disheartening. I think it allows us to focus more on the drama of the executives than the content that they're putting in, instead of the content that they're putting out. Uh, I think this new trend of everybody's dirty laundry being aired out in public is also really problematic. So, but I think that, you know, there isn't really amazing content to focus on, which is part of the problem. Then I think that there's a, a hate that we've seen in politics uh, seep into entertainment. Entertainment is supposed to be an escape, uh, you know, and it's, it's, it's my job to comment on things. Um, uh, so, you know, sometimes you'll see me comment on something that I don't particularly care for. But I, I feel like, you know, there have been instances where I've been like, you know what? I think this is not great. So like Peacemaker didn't cover it because I didn't want to hate cover something. Uh, Strange World. I didn't think, you know, Disney's animated movie from Thanksgiving. I felt that, you know, uh, any negative negativity there would... Uh, you know, just be harmful to the groups that were hoping to were hoping to be represented there, but were done so poorly. Uh, you know, like uh, Blue Beetle. I I did the trailer reaction. I thought it was you know, you, you, if you told me that movie came out in the '90s, I'd believe you. I'd be like, that was VFX were ahead of their time. But you know, I'm not going to sit here and make uh, a trailer breakdown where I just you know say the things awful for the whole time. You know, uh, I think you know. There's, it's just, it's really, t we're in a very tough space right now. Like a really tough space. And also everybody has to have the same feeling. Like if I, I could see that in the comments of my Blue Beetle reaction, uh, some people, a number of people agreed with me that it just wasn't for them. They thought it was a little weak. And then I saw other people being like, oh no, why don't you support it? You know, it's like, hey, you know, you know, I don't think people are, I don't see anyone hating on it. I think people just are like, it's just, you know, it doesn't look as amazing as maybe it had been billed as. Uh, so, so, so let, we'll see. Uh, but we are in a very crazy space. So I said we, we saw a Secret Invasion trailer last night. We saw a Blue Beetle trailer this morning. Ah, uh, thanks, Jerry, for gifting 10 memberships. And then we had Bob Iger host uh, a shocking Disney shareholder meeting. They're going to have that video up, by the way. They're, they said they were going to post it. I tweeted out the link earlier today. Um, it was a fabulously packaged presentation, but then the, the toxicity at the end of the meeting, oh my gosh, we're going to talk about it in the third story. But, uh, I just think again, that just encapsulates where Hollywood is right now. I mean, I'm glad Disney's not backing down. Um, we'll talk about it in the, in the final uh, section, but yeah, whoo. Whoa, boy. You know, I mean, I think we all like some drama now and then, but this is a lot. This is a lot. All right. Oh, thanks, Clint. Clint also gifted some memberships. All right. So we're going to get started. Uh, thank you so many people. So nice to see so many of you joining. Uh, you can uh, please, you can say anything that you would like while the stream is going. Uh, I will go to comments at the end of each story and questions, and I'll, I'll, I'll solicit questions. Uh, and then at the very end of the stream, you can ask me anything that you would like on any topic you would like. But please try to stay on topic. Uh, when we're discussing uh, these stories. Uh, so actually, we're going to start about, there's even some drama about poor Lady Gaga's Harley Quinn. Ah, uh, thank you, Weesey, for gifting another five memberships. That's very kind of you. All right, so story number one. Here we go. Hold on. Boop. So I love how uh, Lady Gaga looks as Harley Quinn. I think she looks absolutely incredible. But I was very sad to see somebody, I think somebody sent it to me or or. or, or included me in a response that some Harley, uh, Margot Robbie Harley Quinn fan channel was saying, ah, oh, Gaga will never, you know, was, was comparing the attractiveness of the two actresses as the character. I thought that was a horrible thing to do. 
I think Lady Gaga looks very pretty, to be honest with you. Hey, Bison Poop, thanks for gifting those memberships. So I thought that was a horrible thing to do. Uh, and then also, I think that it's it's a such an old school horrible approach to a, to a quote unquote attractiveness. Uh, you know, not only do I think that Lady Gaga looks very attractive here, but I think that nothing is more attractive than self confidence. And I actually have mentioned that before when talking about Lady Gaga. Uh, I feel that Lady Gaga, you know, that's the most attractive thing about her is her self confidence. It is aspirational how how much self-confidence that she has i think it's wonderful um i i don't want to pull the look present progressive i mean i hope you don't mean between the two of them i don't want to pit them against each other uh you know i'll tell you that right now i prefer the lady gaga take on the character but i think we shouldn't you know forget how how much of an impact on pop culture margot robbie did as the character but you know it just didn't take you know, the movies never particularly did well. And, you know, you're going to see me just, I'm a bit, you know, I do movie math every week. I'm a big uh, advocate of let the market decide. Uh, you know, not to say that you can't reapproach the market because you want something to have going on. But, you know, the marketplace will let you know how you're doing. Uh, and so I'm like, let's just let the marketplace decide who, which one they like better, right? Or which one, you know, they don't have, one has to have to be better than the other, but perhaps one that's the more successful, right? I mean, because, you know, Margot Robbie's Harley Quinn has not been successful from a financial standpoint. You know, the movie's just not, well, the first one did very well. And she certainly sold a lot of merch, to be honest. Remember I said nobody would dress up as her? And that would turn out to not be the case, you know? I mean, that look is extremely popular. What I like about this look for uh, Harley Quinn is that it makes her more of an equal to the Joker, you know, and I like that quite a bit. I know that some people will dislike that. You know, I don't want her to be the Joker's uh, side piece, you know. Uh, I want her to be, you know, very much his partner in crime. Uh, you know, as, as a woman, that to me is more interesting. Uh, and you know what, I would hope for my own crazy relationship, <laughs> right? Relationship goals. Uh, so I, I just think it looks really great. I will say that they have to be very careful with that. Uh, I think that it still needs to be Joker's film. I mean, everybody loved Joaquin Phoenix in the first film. They can share the movie. They can even share the movie. Uh, but um, she can't take the movie over. If she takes the movie over, it's going to be problematic for her. You know, and even if I... Even if I love the film, I, I can separate my own personal love for it from analyzing its, its business prospects. And I can tell you that if they turn this, if, if Harley Quinn takes over Joker 2, uh, oh, thanks, Heidi, that's very kind of you. Um, I, I feel like that's really bad. Yeah, Jesse, there is an AMA at the very end. So let's look at some of these pictures. But um, I. I I'm, I, from what, some of the things that I've heard, I do have some concern about that being the takeaway from some people, that uh, Lady Gaga's Harley Quinn kind of takes over. Um, and I think that would, that would be a very big mistake on Todd Phillips' part. And uh, let's see if he, he ends up doing that. So, so let's look at these photos, all right? So they were filming on the iconic stairs from the first film. Now, some of you sent me some video of the movie filming, and I was like, I don't want to know everything. I don't want to watch everything. I don't want to know every little clip. So I'm just going to show you stills. You know, I don't need to see actual sequences from the film. So there she is on the stairs, and I don't want to give anything away. I mean, I kind of understand, I think, the context of this picture. But again, I, I don't want to give anything away for the movie. But there she is with longer hair and a very somber look. She certainly ain't dancing on those stairs. But give her a minute. So that's her there. And then, oh, I like this one of her. This was the first one I actually saw the other day. I believe, yeah, just yesterday. And I thought that this was phenomenal. One of you sent me a funny meme of this where uh, Joker was saying, so wait a minute, you're telling me it's $35 for parking? Uh, as someone who recently, uh, when I was in Pittsburgh, uh, you know, recently had to, do, <laughs> had to park uh, in a similar situation, it was hilarious. So I just thought that was very funny. I just thought that was great. They look very much like, in some degree, they're going, they're having a long night out on the town, and you know, they gotta park the Joker mobile somewhere. So I just thought that was very funny. Uh, they look, they look like an amazing pair to me. They look like a fun pair. They look like, again, as I said, a pair of equals. I'm still glad that he's able to pull focus. 
you know, it's very hard. You know, you want your, um, your characters to be balanced. Uh, but boy, do they look good. They look really, really good. Uh, I love all the white powder makeup all over his whole outfit. Uh, I, I mean, I do kind of miss the green in the hair, but it looks, it looks, it looks fantastic. She does smoke as well, Lloyd Lester. We have a couple of pics like that, but I love the, the, the makeup. The, the, some people said they thought maybe they were, uh, they were smooching and that's why their lipstick was all messed up. But I thought that was a great idea. I was like, oh, I love it. Uh, but you know, they both have the messed up red lipstick. I love the eye work on her. Uh, and I think the bob is great. I much prefer the bob, the blonde bob. Uh, I think she looks phenomenal with the blonde bob. Uh, far better than the longer look that she, the longer hair that she had on the courthouse steps. So I love this picture. This picture to me is just absolutely incredible. All right, so next, uh, there you can see she has just a different jacket from the courthouse. Uh, the, uh, the rest of the outfit is the same. Uh, I love it. As someone who wears a lot of black themselves, <laughs> I wear a lot of black and red. This is sometimes what I look like walking around the city, quite frankly. Um, you know, if you were to ever see me, I actually saw someone um, just the other day on Saturday, and I looked quite a bit like this. <laughs> I mean, I, I wasn't wear, wearing uh, stockings, but, you know, I wear a lot of black, and so I, I think that's one of the reasons that I particularly like this. I was like, ah, that's an outfit that I would wear, you know? So I think that, that's really fun. I think the red uh, liner in the coat is phenomenal. I think that looks really great. And I, I just, I, I mean, she's got a smoky eye. She's wearing black and white for the most part. I mean, I think she looks fantastic. That's right, Chad. She looks like a New Yorker. That's so funny. She looks like a New Yorker, you know, and I think that's just so funny. She looks very much like she comes from, you know, she's a New York escaped mental patient and she looks fantastic. So I, I love this. She's, she's doing a musical sequence here. Uh, she's singing some Judy Garland. I'm very nervous about the singing. Even though it's Lady Gaga, I'm very nervous. But hopefully it'll be good. Hopefully, hopefully it'll be good. But I, I, I gotta tell you, I'm, I'm nervous, all right? Then here she's doing some more dancing. She's having, she has flats on here. She has flat shoes on. Uh, I guess because she's got to do a lot of running and stuff, right? I hope she gets to do a lot of action. Uh, so there's that. Uh, so that's, that photo was so cool. Uh, then here she is about to be arrested for the big showstopper. You can see the two Gotham PD detectives behind her. But I'm like, let's not do too much with her. Where's Joker? You got to make sure Joker's in here. You're making me a little nervous. But, you know, I love her smile. I love her makeup. I think she just looks fantastic. It's, um, it's, it's, it'll be hard for me to like this more. Uh, and then uh, there she is with Joker a little bit. He looks, uh, he looks great. Uh, you know, they look, I mean, they really cast a perfect Harley for Joaquin Phoenix, quite frankly. Uh, so there they are together. He's in brown, and uh, that's interesting, the color palettes. Uh, I don't want to talk about it too much. I don't want to give anything away. Hadi says, Grace, do you think they're going to make out, it, make out that it was all in their minds? Um, mm, let's see. I don't want to, I mean, again, I, do, I know some stuff. I'm trying not to find out too much about this movie because I would like to be surprised, you know? So, uh, cause this is like really high on my list of must see. I'm very, very excited about this. So I'm trying to balance my professional needs of knowing what's going to happen with my fan needs of wanting to be surprised when I see it. So I think I'm in a pretty good space right now. I love her hair so much. She looks great. It's hard to rock bangs, by the way. Maybe she's depressed. Every woman who's ever depressed cuts bangs, which I think is hilarious. I know women in real life who've done that, friends of mine who have cut bangs when they're depressed. It's so funny. Uh, so I think it's really, it's just great. Um, and then next, uh, here she is. I like this one. This is the last photo I have of this. I like this just repose. I mean, she just looks so relatable to me. She just looks really great. Some people said they were a little Sid and Nancy, which I think is interesting. Uh, but she just looks to me extremely relatable. And you know, some people are gonna relate more to the Harley Quinn version of the character and that's fine. You know, I mean, everybody's going to relate to different, to the character. I mean, when you present such different versions of a character, you know, society is not a monolith, you know, and some people are going to react to different things. As for someone who went through a goth stage, like myself, I like this. You know, Danny, it's funny that you say that Margot is more comics accurate. She is not at all comics accurate. They changed the comic to look like Margot Robbie's character because she was so popular. Uh, now, and that's, that's very commendable. 
But, I mean, are you talking about, like, the new, com like, the latest look that Margot Robbie had? I wasn't, like, hardcore goth. I was, like, as goth as she is. I wore a lot of dark eye makeup and a lot of black. <laughs> I was in a bad mood. That was just about the end of it, you know? That's as goth as I think I got. But, you know, for this, you know, it was pretty goth. Uh, hey, Jorge. That's right. Thumb holes. I still have the thumb holes. I didn't have black hair. Let's see here. I think if I showed you pictures of goth grace, you would not think that I was very goth. I don't want to, I mean, I don't want to get your hopes up here. Okay. I mean, like compared to myself now, <laughs> like, like this, like as much as this. I just think she looks phenomenal. Like, I just would love to look like, I mean, I think that's such a great outfit. I'd be like, oh, where do you shop, Harley Quinn? You look phenomenal. I mean, she just looks fantastic. Uh, so I think she looks great. I just absolutely love it. I love the attitude. Uh, you know, some people will prefer the sexier take on the character. To me, this is sexier. So it's all about personal preference. I mean, that person looks so cool to me and so enigmatic and such a great personality that you just want to talk to them that I, I, I just love it. I mean, I just, I think it's absolutely incredible. It is a little Martha Wayne Joker. That's true. So I just love it. I love it. It's hard for me to like it. I mean, I couldn't like it more. I love, I also, I didn't talk too much about these pictures on top there, but just the looks on their faces. I mean, I'm glad Joker's taking the lead there in that moment. And they just look great. They look like a great pair. They look like an amazing couple. I just am so impressed with this. So does anybody have any questions about this before I move on to the, uh, the, the Disney shareholder apocalypse uh, meeting? It was a drama. It was drama. <clears throat> That's right, Nar Nabby. Power couple indeed. Mika says Margot was very much like Jimmy Palmiotti, Amanda Connors take. A little bit. I really hated that comic, though. Frosty the Mexican Snowman says, will Joker wear his original Joker makeup and suit? Ah, uh, you can see under those sunglasses, he kind of has the blue on his eyes. I'm not sure if he's going to wear his original suit. St Someone else was in the set photos. Uh, Steven says, it may be smart from an awards perspective to have a focus on Gaga, Joker's big Oscar win before he w was for acting, and the chances Joaquin wins an another for the same role is low. But, you know, the, the goal isn't here to win an Oscar, it's to make a movie that's, you know, really enjoyed. You know, I mean, that would be a nice dividend. You know, it, wouldn't, it would be nice if Gaga finally got her Oscar, especially after she was, she was snubbed for uh, 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 House of Gucci. She was so good in House of Gucci. I thought she should have been nominated. Um, but yeah, uh, I think they should focus on making a really good movie, quite frankly. Uh, Mika, I would hope the Billion Dollar Club for this movie. Uh, I'll just ask you about Lady Gaga. I don't want to pit Margot Robbie and Lady Gaga against each other. Um, even though they kind of are just by the fact that they're playing the same role, but I just think they can coexist. Uh, but I get a little nervous about it being a billion dollar picture because whenever you add feminist stuff to some things, unfortunately in today's society, people take offense at it, which is not good. I feel bad about that. And you know, you know, haunt, uh, who said that Kyle, Kylie said house of Gucci is a movie to watch on an airplane. Well, the last, the last third of house of Gucci is admittedly awful. But I really liked the first part of it. So what do you think, hold on, of Lady Gaga's Harley? So let's see here. We have, love it. I love it so much. Love it so much. Then we have, uh, looks interesting. Not for me. And then, hate it. We have all the emotion. There you go. All right, let me get back here so I can see these questions. Tit for tat, what a great name, tit for tat. Welcome back. You have diamond status. I'm glad you came back. All right here, let's see here. Who else do I have? Garrett says, how much singing in this movie? I fear a lot, Garrett. We're getting a lot of singing. Rachel Ziegler is going to sing all over the place and uh, whatever the heck, and, and, uh, the, the Hunger Games prequel. And I'm not a big fan of the singing, so let's see. 
Frosty the Mexican Snowman says, does it matter if it's really Harley's movie if it does good with critics and box office? No, it doesn't matter, but I worry it's going to hurt it with audiences in the box office. That's my concern. Steven Turner says, there's a sisterhood around Catwoman actresses. That's true, but I don't think there's going to be a sisterhood here, boy. Because remember, Margot Robbie tried to recruit Margot Robbie to be one of the back, her backup singers in Birds of Prey. And Margot Robbie said, ah, I like your role. Let's see here. I'll watch this. Where are the musical numbers? They've sh- they, well, I don't know if it's going to be big and flashy, but, you know, this staircase features a musical number. There is some video of it online. Again, I don't want to show you video because uh, that's just too spoilery in my opinion. Ruben says, where should Gaga take her career next after this? Uh, let's see how it does. I think she really needs to get, I mean, House of Gucci really did not work for her. Uh, I think this couldn't, this is the role of a lifetime in my opinion, and I'm so happy that she got it. Uh, but let's see how it goes over. I mean, only so a few of us might feel it's a role of a lifetime. So if I were her, I would, you know, maybe focus on putting out another great album because she just can't kill time. So focus on her music, and then if this does really well, she'll be in a good position to get another great role. I think she's a great actress. I think she's really a wonderful person. You know, the other day, not the other day, but about a month or so ago, somebody showed the clip where she handled, you know, Anderson Cooper said that some people felt that she was uh, trans. You know, there was a rumor going around that she was trans. She'd been born a, 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 a man. And I thought that Lady Gaga's response to that was so incredible. And she said, so what if I was? What, what difference would it make? And I just thought it was, she just owned that. And I thought that it was such a sophisticated, again, self-confident answer. I was like, what a queen. Let's see here. Let's see here. Hey, Victoria. Danny says, Grace, do you think Anya would look even better? Well, I don't want to compare them. Do I think Anya Taylor-Joy could make a very good Harley Quinn? Yes, I do. And if Matt Reeves is looking for a Harley Quinn, I would point him in Anya Taylor-Joy's direction. But I don't want them to compete, you know? Uh, Rashad, I'm not sure if Zazie Beetz's character characters in this at all. I thought I saw a headline that she was, but I have not, I don't recall. It's going to be tough to compete with this. Hey, Joshua Anders, welcome back. Uh, David Wayne says, do you think a new take on Joker and Harley is her obsessed with Joker as a patient more than a love, more than as a love interest? Uh, I don't know. I mean, I told you I heard they met in musical therapy. Let's see. Again, I don't want to, you know, I don't want to know too much going in, right? Daniel Harati says, do you think Gaga's Oscar performance is method acting? Is she a method actress? I'm not sure. She seems a little bit more professional to me than that. I mean, not that there's anything wrong. What am I? What am I, Brian Cox, trash and uh, method actors? Um, you know, he's always talking about Jeremy Strong. But I feel like, uh, I think there's a precision to Lady Gaga's acting that makes me feel like she's uh, a little bit more in control. Victor says, who would you cast as Poison Ivy against Lady Gaga? Someone softer. You know, maybe my, my Anya Taylor Joe, I mean, I don't know, my Anya Anna de Armas idea. You know, I think you need someone softer because Lady Gaga is so edgy. Let's see here. Danny, I don't know if Matt Reeves is going to use Harley. I heard that he was if he's going to do an Arkham Asylum uh, show, but where is that? That's right, that weird boy. That's what Lady Gaga said about that Anderson Cooper question. She said, my fans don't care and neither do I. What a great person. Uh, Jay Shrumple Stiltskin said, Lady Gaga wants to, wanted to be an actress first. Um, well, I don't think she should go around saying that. I mean, what's the point? She should just focus on, she just is very happy with the journey that she's taken, you know? You never know where life's going to take you. You should be open to everything. All right, so let me close this poll up and get on to the next story, right? All right, so the poll said, 52%, only 52% of you love it so much. Uh, oh, but look, 39% think it looks interesting. And only 7% are negative. Six, that's like, that's better than the Guardians of the Galaxy ticket poll I did earlier today on Twitter. Uh, 6% say not for them, which is only like slightly negative. And then only 1% hate it. Oh, that's very promising. That's very promising. Oh, I'm so happy. Jake Van Norden said, do you feel like if it wasn't a musical, they would have chosen a different actress? No, she's perfect. She's perfect. Did you see her mugshot? She's perfect. Daniel Harati said, oh, was she method acting? She was just, I think she didn't want to lose her accent. 
Hey, Josh. Norwegian Kryptonian says, but people compare Batmans and Supermans. Isn't it what fans do? It's fine to compare and say what you like better. I guess that's a good point. I guess I would, I would qualify it by saying I don't like trashing what you don't like. You know, I think it's better to say what you prefer and why rather than tearing down what you don't like. Because it's offensive to that actor and I think it's offensive to the fans who like it. You know? I mean, it's a fine line. You know, sometimes nobody likes it and that has to be commented on. You know? Heidi K says, Grace, do you think it'll go darker? Todd Phillips said it went over one billion because a lot of us were watching a second and third time. I know, it was so good. It was so good. I think the first, it was hard to go darker than the first movie. He shot that guy on air. It was great though. Uh, Danny says, do you think her look will be as popular among women on Halloween as Margot's was? Uh, I think people will do a more flamboyant take on it unless by the end of the movie she has a different look. I mean, not that many people dress up like Joaquin Phoenix's Joker, right? I think Harley, I think Margot Robbie's Harley Quinn is more of a costume, whereas uh, Lady Gaga and Joaquin Phoenix like are the character. And so their movies make more money and get more uh, prestige. But I don't know if people really want to, it's not really much of a costume. It's a very easy costume. Anthony says, when does this release? October 2024. All right, so let's move on to the next story of the day. Hold on, here we go. All right, all right, hold on, here we go. Boop, oh, I covered up Maui's face. Oops. Uh, Raphael says, do you think that Gaga seems too in control to be Harley? I haven't really seen her performance yet. I mean, is Joker very in control? I mean, let's just see. But I mean, it's a valid question though. All right, so Disney's shareholder meeting was today. It had a live presentation. Most of it was audio, but they had a really nice little video they put together. And part of it featured Dwayne Johnson doing a huge announcement. This was their big announcement to get everybody's attention. And that's that they have, they have, they have uh, approved a live action Moana. And The Rock will play Maui, the character he, of course, voiced and did the singing for. Uh, boy, I'd be very curious to see The Rock do that live singing. <laughs> Woo! Um, you know, and so The Rock will be playing uh, himself. Now, the fans, the internet, almost immediately said, why don't you have a sequel? Which is what a number of you are saying right now. Because Moana, we see it every week on Movie Math, is in the top 10 movies on streaming. People love Moana. People are watching that on a loop. They're like, inject it right into my veins. Uh, and so... Now they're like, well, how about a live action one? And everybody's like, why didn't you just make a Moana sequel? And I think maybe they should have, but you know, they already have a Zootopia sequel and a Toy Story sequel and a Frozen sequel. Uh, and they have a, a Moana animated series on Disney Plus that's still coming out. So you're still gonna get that. Uh, but so they've instead decided to do a live action one. You know, DL Nugro, that's a great name, says, I think that this is a great idea for The Rock. That's interesting. You know, The Rock, one of, I've never seen someone hurt so badly by DC. I've seen, and we've seen a lot of people have the DC curse affect them. But Dwayne Johnson, considering how high up he was, the negativity towards him now online is just awful. It's just so bad. I'm shocked. Uh, and so, as Danny said, you know, Danny's comment is the rock only cares about the rock. That's what was that story that came out from DC, you know, about, you know, after Shazam opened so poorly, they ran that story in the rap about how, you know, Dwayne Johnson was trying to make everything in DC Dwayne Johnson centric, which was true. It was true, but we already talked about that. And that's how we got him to stop with the Black Adam stuff. And let's say, and he left, he left, he took his ball and he went over to Disney, which we'll talk about that in a moment. But I think that to once again, maybe make the worst choice for the franchise and for the fans it could get him again. I didn't even think about that until you brought that up. You know, that makes me kind of nervous that people might be like, well, we wanted a sequel, but since a live action movie starring you is better for you, uh, that's what we're getting. And that, I don't think, I think that would be bad for him. Uh, that's interesting that you make the comparison. Who did that? Um, who made that comparison here? Uh, where did it go? I saw somebody made a comparison to Aladdin. You know, it's interesting. He kind of is a little bit like Will Smith is the genie. I mean, he's a big name, although he just did Jungle Cruise. So you're like, ah, this is a lot, you know? Like you were just in Jungle Cruise playing The Rock. Like, I agree with everybody. He better have hair. He better have a lot of hair 
in this in this movie. <laughs> he better look just like that, or like his grandfather. That's his grandfather there on the left. Isn't that great? Uh, that's his grandfather, um, uh, and he based Maui a lot on the character. Uh, I mean, the, the character of Maui a lot on his grandfather, which I feel is you know really adorable. Uh, and his grandfather is a little doughier than he is. <laughs> you know, the rock's more chiseled. The rock is a rock. Uh, but I would love for him to have that hair. I don't see how he could play the role without the hair, quite frankly. Because, you know, in the animated movie, he's swinging his hair all over the place. He just can't look like the rock. He has to look like this. Uh, so anyway, we'll see. Now, some of you are wondering about everybody else's participation in this. Well... Uh, I found out that Ollie Crav well, they, they said that Ollie, Ollie, uh, Ollie Cravajo would, did they an announce this? I think they did on the press release. Ollie Cravajo is um, an executive producer. She voiced Moana in the original movie. Uh, I think it would be great if she played uh, Tay Fitty, the goddess, the green goddess. Remember this character? I think that uh, Ollie Cravajo should play this character. Because I, I think it would be really bad if Dwayne Johnson was the only one on camera uh, and she was not. Uh, I don't think she's going to play Moana because Moana is supposed to be a teenager. So I don't see that happening at all, quite frankly. I give that a zero chance of happening. But that's who she should be. I think it's a great idea. And if she doesn't play this character, they can just forget the whole thing right now. I also have some tea for you. Um, Jared Bush, who wrote the screenplay for the first film, is actually writing the screenplay for the live action movie. And that is a big change because usually they get only live action talent to work on these animated uh, remakes. And it's really unfortunate to see all that animation talent left behind, especially because they don't get any profit participation. There's no union in animation, so they just get left out. So I thought that was really nice that Jared Bush was going to be able to continue. And uh, they were maybe learning a little bit of a lesson from that. Uh, and they were bringing some of the animation people over to live action. Yeah, he did do Encanto. And, you know, I wonder if Lin-Manuel Miranda will write some new songs. I'm sure he'll find a little spot for himself. I'm sure he'll write a new song where Lin-Manuel Miranda can do some rapping. And he'll, you know, and, you know, I got to tell you, I'll be excited to see it. Because, you know, I thought the original movie was pretty good, uh, but it's grown on me. I certainly do like the music for it quite a bit. And, uh, you know, it reminds me of how successful Jumanji and Avatar and Aquaman were. You know, if they released it around Thanksgiving or Christmas, it could do really well. That's a great space for that type of movie. Those type of movie has done incredibly well over the years. Uh, and then also, as I said, it's extremely successful, extremely successful on Disney+. Plus. Now, I saw a number of people making a very funny joke online. I saw a number of accounts make it where they said the hierarchy, of, uh, the hierarchy of power in the Disney universe is about to change. And I thought that was hilarious. And I was talking to a friend of mine, and uh, we were like, uh, I was like, he's, I was like, the rock's never going to live that hierarchy line down. It will haunt him forever. And then my friend, he made a really good comment, and he said that uh, the rock should make the joke himself. The rock, he should have done it in this video. It would have really, I think, I think if he showed a little bit of humility and he owned it, I think that people would think that was hilarious, right? If The Rock was like, the hierarchy of power in the Disney universe is about to change, I think everybody would have been like, ah, that Rock. I think he has to own it and take, and, and take control of it because that joke is just too easy to use. It's an extremely funny joke, quite frankly. ES thinks it would have ruined the joke. Oh, well, I think that's kind of the goal, isn't it? To ruin the joke so people stop using it. I mean, once he does it, they don't do it anymore, hopefully. You know, otherwise, people are going to be making this joke about him for the rest of his life. <laughs> It'll be like on his tombstone. I mean, it's really bad. He's got he's to find a way to get ahead of this. But, yeah. Uh, Nathan's like, where's my Tangled remake? That's funny. Uh, that, you know, that would be a good idea. I think I personally would prefer a Moana sequel and a Tangled live action. But this is what we're getting. I hope the live, I want the live action movies to be good. Uh, the ones that go directly to Disney Plus have been not so great, but I've really enjoyed a lot of the ones in theaters. I hope The Little Mermaid is good. I liked Aladdin. I liked Beauty and the Beast. I thought The Lion King, I mean, I thought it was, you know, it was basically still an animated movie, but I enjoyed it. All right, let me take some questions on this story, and then we'll go to the final story, which is, whew, super dramatic. David Felton says, I agree that there needs to be a new Lin-Manuel Miranda song or two, but he doesn't need to be in it. His music is what is in his wheelhouse. I feel it's almost impossible that he won't show up at least to do a rap. 
I give that a very, I mean, if he can resist being in The Little Mermaid, I think we should reward him with allowing him to be in Moana. Let's see here. Uh, Danny says, will it be more realistic like The Little Mermaid? I don't think so. Not with Dwayne Johnson in it. I think it's going to be fun. I think this movie is going to focus on being fun. Don't forget the Polynesian Resort in Disney World uh, has totally been rethemed for Moana. They have invested a lot of money in Moana. They are going to want to make sure that people like that. Chico, I don't know if they should do a Princess and the Frog live action because they're frogs for most of the movie. Mando's Ace says, do you think they'll start announcing live action films for Raya, Big Hero 6, Brave, and Frozen? I don't know about the rest of them, but I think we're all just waiting for the day they announce a live action Frozen. And I actually think it would be a good idea, quite frankly. Let's see here. A lot, a, a Johnny says, please animate the animals. Don't make... Hey, hey, uh, Tamatoa and Pua, real animals. Well, I think they're still animated, but I agree. I agree. This realistic take on Sebastian and Flounder was a horrible idea. They could, I think they should be slightly augmented animals. Oh, I liked Cruella, Josh Loves Movies. I totally forgot about Cruella. That was good. Yes, Platinum Diva, that Tiana animated series, I am super excited about it. I'm excited about Tiana's ride. I'm excited about her restaurant. I'm very excited for Tiana. I'm a big Tiana fan. I love that movie. That movie is available a lot of places, and I watch, I've watched it so many times. It's like on a, whenever you're in a hotel or on an airplane, they're like, you want to watch Tangled or Princess and the Frog? And I'm like, yes, please. I was in Los Angeles when the pandemic started, and I was, uh, I was there for like a week. And it was really funny because at the beginning of the week, we there had announcements on TV. Uh, you know, Trump was making a, a, press co a press conference from the Oval Office talking about what's this coronavirus. And by the end of my trip in L.A., I was stuck in my hotel room. I couldn't go out, uh, and I was just getting room service and working on my computer because, you know, I had to wait for my flight. You know, I didn't want to pay to change my flight. And it was only like two days anyway, and I had work to do. So uh, while I was in that hotel room, I watched both Tangled and The Princess and the Frog. And so I will always remember them in particular for that reason. I ordered room service, I was watching those two movies, and it made me feel better. You know, it was this particularly scary time. Um, it was very scary, actually. I had to go on a short walk, and it was, like, really crazy um, to go get something. But, yeah, so I loved those, I love those movies. Uh, let's see here. I did see the news about Lilo and Stitch. Any other questions about this? Uh, what movie with water VFX should they get? Well, Schrumpelstiltskin, I think, you know, it's got an, it's, you'd want it to, then the water is alive in Moana, so they have to have that work somehow. Uh, Frosty Salt, I think Lilo looks adorable. I just want to see what Stitch is going to look like. That movie's going to live or die on whether or not, what Stitch looks like in animation. That weird boy says, there was talk about uh, 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 Auli Cravajo as Lilo's sister. Uh, maybe. I don't know. I don't think she's a big enough star for that. Sorry! Sorry! I said it! I'm sorry! By, look, at, look at Shahar trying to fast forward. All right. I guess you guys don't have a lot of questions about this, so let's move on to the next one. All right, so let's get into the drama. Oh, Bob Iger. Whew! But I gotta tell you, he stood strong. He stood strong. All right. Third, so final story of the day. Boom, baby! So this shareholder meeting. So Bob Iger had a pre-taped video presentation, which was pretty slick. It was an amazing video graphics package. I was like, wow, this is so good. And he filmed it all in Walt Disney World down in Florida, being like, I ain't giving up. Beep. You know, I got to censor myself. YouTube doesn't like it when you swear. So he was like, this is my space. I'm not giving up an inch of Florida. Thank you very much. So it was hilarious that he filmed his entire presentation for Florida. So funny. I think he filmed it back in January. Remember he was in the park in January, which is pretty empty. And I think he had that outfit on in one of the days. He really rocks a business shirt and a cardigan, I got to say. He also looks great. He's also rocking black. He's also wearing black and white. He looks very sharp. Bob Iger, he, you know, he started out as a weatherman. He's a sharp guy. He's a sharp guy. Did you not know? You know did you, I don't know if you knew that about Bob Iger. He started out as a weatherman. That's how he got his big break. Uh, and he worked his way up. You know, he started on, out on camera, and then he went behind the scenes. And I think he's doing a wonderful job. You know, the difference in his style versus Bob Chapik is like night and day. Uh, whoever, yep, yeah, that's right, Daddy Iger. 
whoever is in charge of Disney has to be a very good speaker because they have to do the presentations. Walt started that. Uh, Michael Eisner did a pretty good job with that as well. And I really have appreciated that Bob Iger has done it. And, you know, Bob Chapek tried, but he just did a very good presentation. I don't know why somebody didn't try and work more with Chapek. Uh, but he just wasn't good at it. But Bob Iger, Bob Iger's actually gotten even better at it. Before he, right before he retired, he was doing a lot of presentations at the opening of Shanghai, and he had to read a lot of stuff off of a teleprompter, and he seemed a little stiff. But I have to say, in this presentation, he was excellent. It is an Emperor's New Groove reference, Heidi, one of my favorite movies of all time, when I do the Boom Baby. So yeah, he looks fantastic. All right, so... Uh, he did this whole great thing, and he talked about all the things they were excited about at the Disney parks, and he said, boy, the Disney parks sure are popular, which is code for they're making tons and tons of cash, and if you think we're going to let you mess that up, you're insane. <laughs> That's basically what today's context was on the Disney theme parks. They're like, we are, I mean, they're so packed right now. They have put a lot of micro transactions in the parks. So just like video games, they are cleaning up. Genie Plus sells out. Lightning Lane sells out. Like people wondered, would anyone pay to ride an attraction, a single ride? And the answer is, you more than more than you wanted. They sell out. Tron, Tron sales. So, and that's the only bright point in the company right now, financially. Every other division is losing money. Theme parks are holding this whole thing up. So that's why they're not getting rid of Genie Plus and Lightning Lane, you know, fast pass for cash. You know, as much as Bob Iger might say he wants everything to be good, he can't ignore the amount of money that it's bringing in. Uh, and so they're not going to let Ron DeSantis mess with this. Uh, and so uh, they had some very aggressive comments, uh, I think particularly from conservative uh, constituents, uh, during the interactive part of the shareholder meeting. So let me tell you about it. Uh, you know, and it, it, I think that it's nice that there's a forum, uh, and it was very nice of Bob Iger to patiently listen to everybody, and he respectfully answered every single person, even when they did not speak to him respectfully, I have to say. And the fact that anybody would think that Disney would turn their backs on the LGBT community, which has done so much heavy lifting for this company, and which is what the, so, many, so many of their fans and so many of the people who make the content I mean, do you like anything that Howard Ashman did? I mean, how can you not support the LGBT community? So it's crazy that anybody would think that Disney, Disney would do that. Uh, you, can have a, you, know, you can have a discussion about where the, where the line is, right? Uh, but I mean, I think that's more the discussion that should be being had. I mean, I think that uh, if, if, there's, if anyone has any concerns, I think that it's just ridiculous to ask Disney to do that. And I, I'm glad that they're not. So anyway, uh, it, it, was, it was really crazy. All right, so they had not only some very aggressive uh, um, comments, okay, about, uh, you know, they had some, well, when you have a shareholder meeting, there are things that the shareholders can vote on. And some people put forward some very aggressive conservative uh, policies for shareholders to vote on. Uh, I actually am a Disney shareholder, and I always forget to vote. When I was watching today on the regular public stream, I was like, wait a minute. I think I own like 10 shares. I was like, I think I own some shares of Disney. Why, don't I, why aren't I on this thing voting? All right, so anyway, um, I'm only starting to get into the stock market. It's very complex and difficult. Uh, so anyway, look at me. Golf, the stock market. I'm trying to, trying to be a grown-up. All right. <laughs> it's crazy. So uh, they were like, uh, yeah, so they had some, and they also, there was a Q&A section, but they also got really aggressive, like really aggressive. And a lot of it was focused on the LGBT community and representing them. And I thought that was really sad for the reasons I just outlined. But also, you know, whenever you see somebody coming for someone else, you should really realize that you're next on that list. That's something that I think is oh, it's so important for everybody to stand together. You know, and they already are to some degree coming after, uh, you know, race relations, ethnicity. You see a lot of that. And then I feel gender equality can't be far behind, you know, with uh, being upset with the way women are presented. Like, when are you going to start having some of these uh, people uh, on Ron DeSantis' side complaining about, oh, maybe what's wrong with, you know, Disney princesses just wanting to be getting married and having, I mean, like, if you, I mean, I told you, I watched Cinderella today and I'm like, she's lost your mind. She's gone insane. 
Uh, you know, and like, they're like, what's wrong with the Little Mermaid only wanting to date Prince Eric? What, you know, why does she have to have any life goals? And that's, you know, and that's right, you know, Roe v. Wade, you're right, Noah, that's very true. You know, that's like a small, that's a number. I mean, I'm, they're not being very public about the stuff against women, but I feel like it's on the horizon. So it's like we're all on the same uh, to-do list. And so I think that's why it's important to stand together. I'm not getting too grown up, the Brendan V. I'm very much, you know, they say Peter Pan complexes. I definitely am proud to have a Peter Pan complex. In fact, I sometimes will stand like Peter Pan, you know, like this. Uh, just, it's just something I do. Uh, but yeah, I, I absolutely uh, adore uh, yeah, I'm, I have no interest in totally growing up, but you know, it's also important to be a little bit responsible, you know, um, you know, you are playing the game of life, you know, so just that's some, I, you know, I think it's, it's like many things. It's a delicate balance. All right. So anyway, uh, very, very aggressive, extremely, extremely, extremely aggressive comments. So Bob Iger took the opportunity to really speak out directly against Ron DeSantis. And he said that Disney, like any individual, has the right to free speech. Uh, and they have the right to also free action. Disney can do and say whatever they want as long as they aren't breaking the law. Uh, and I would say that it's true. I, I definitely 1,000% agree with that. Uh, you know, the, and then you, the, way, the way a capitalistic society works is that the marketplace then decides. You know, it's a little bit like free speech. So here's the thing. I, this is very much how I feel. You have the right to free speech, but people have the right to react to what you say. That's true. A company has the right to, react, to do whatever they want, but then the consumer has the right to decide whether or not they want to purchase that or not. Disney, by the way, well, I think they're hurting a little bit. Um, they're certainly not, people definitely want to be in Disney World, but I think some of their stuff like Disney Plus and their movies are hurting a little bit, but I think that's more a reflection of the quality of the content rather than, you know, and also, you know, I don't like Strange World, you know, people saying it was the representation that was a problem when it was honestly just that was like, that was just checking the, check, check boxes the movie. It was just a very poor film. You know, no matter what it was about, it would have failed. Uh, so yeah, so I feel like, you know, consequences, action and consequences. That's why this is supposed to work. Now, you know, you might say, well, well, Dis you know, I see some arguing about, you know, uh, you know, well, Disney is in a special situation. No, they're not. You know, they, they are a company and they have a product and you can decide whether or not you want to interact with that. That is the, bland is the right word, Elliot. I agree with that. And, you know, you might, you know, think about what if it was flipped? You know, what if uh, a liberal governor were to punish a company for a conservative stance. I think people would be up in arms about that, you know? And with some of the way religion's being pushed these days, you know, I wouldn't be surprised. And, you know, some people would think that was maybe a good idea, you know, because, you know, we're, of course, supposed to be a country built on separation of church and state. And I'm a little bit upset that, you know, that seems to really be going out the window, you know? Uh, you know, I certainly have no problem with people worshiping. But it's supposed to be freedom to worship. You know, America is a, uh, a multi... Uh, that's right, politics grace unlocked, Dylan. That's very funny. Hi, Dylan. Uh, that's hilarious. Yeah, I mean, the whole point is you have freedom to worship whatever you want, as long as it's legal. Uh, so, you know, a giant unicorn, Emilio. A whole, whole herd of uh, unicorns, and they're going to Disney World. <laughs> I'm a huge Disney fan, as many of you know. Uh Platinum Diva says they haven't separated anything. Well, they're supposed to have. I think they kind of had. They did for a while. Uh, I think that's very important. So anyway, back to what Bob Iger was saying. Bob Iger said that Ron DeSantis pun took it upon himself to punish Disney for their stance. Um, and, you know, I think that's very much what he did. I agree with that. You know, Ron DeSantis doesn't have to like what Disney did, and he could have said, well, here I'm offering an alternative, right? But he can't use his seat of power to punish Disney because he doesn't like what they said uh, or what their actions are, as long as there's no law that's been broken. Now, DeSantis' thing has been to create laws that he then says Disney is breaking. But are those laws legal? Uh, that, I think, is a genuine question. They're having a real fight in Florida. It's going to get a lot worse. I believe earlier today, before the shareholder meeting, Ron DeSantis said he was in, uh, recommending crim a criminal investigation into how Disney stripped Reedy Creek of its power, you know, the new board of its powers. 
That is incredible. That's right, Ross. I think Bob Iger threw a couple of bricks in his pillow. Although I think DeSantis is going to do the same. I think that they are, but you know, DeSantis is running for president and Disney has billions of dollars on the line. And so it's just going to get really ugly. But there's just, I mean, it's, it's too late. Pandora's box has been opened. This is just the way it's going to go. Uh, and Bob Iger said that he felt that Ron DeSantis's approach was anti-business and anti-Florida because he said we're creating jobs here and we are prepared over the next decade to spend $17 billion in investment uh, into the state. So I don't know where the criminal investigation comes from, SMR Goose. That's just the headline I saw. And I was like, that makes no sense. But there are some people, you know, uh, Ron DeSantis was reelected in Florida. But then again, once again, the Democrats ran an absolute idiot against him. And they're like, ah, oh, how did he get reelected? And you're like, did you see who you were against him? He was a total moron. I'm not at all surprised that nobody voted for him. You know, if you want to unseat uh, any of these Republican candidates, you need a moderate candidate to do so. Uh, you know, going in, or, or, or I think, didn't Florida run like some former Republican who was pretending to be a Democrat? You know, you need to run a middle of the road candidate who will be able to get moderates to cross back over. That's what you need to do. I mean, it's so obvious. And the Democrats are like, what should we do? And you're like, ah, oh, it's really the oldest time. And they're like, oh, this confounds us. And you're like, you know, you're equally as, you're destroying the country with your, their incompetence. I feel like I'm watching The Mandalorian with the new republic and the empire. All right, let's move over to questions on this subject before, you know, I'm, I'm getting really political here. <laughs> ah, whoo. But I have a lot invested here. Oh, that's right. Yeah, Charlie Cr uh, Crist. He was a Republican, an independent, and a Democrat. That, to me, says he stands for nothing. Welm says, these are brilliant Game of Thrones level moves by Bob Iger. DeSantis is going to learn that Florida's throne is safely guarded at Disney Castle. I don't know, though. I don't know. I mean, Florida is a very Republican state, and a number of Ron DeSantis' um, constituents do support him on this. I mean, I mean, it's going to get ugly. I'm on Bob Iger's side, but, I mean, he's going to get hit. They're both going to get hit. Danny, I have not stayed at Cinderella Castle. You need a special invite or you have to win a competition to do that. Jordan says, my respect for Iger and Disney has gone up so much. Yeah, I'm just glad, you know, I'm glad he's not just taking it lying down. Uh, yeah, Shamar, that last guy at the end of questions, I don't know what was going on there. I, don't, I was like, what is happening? And they, Bob Iger let him speak, and Bob Iger answered him respectfully. Yes, uh, SMR Goose, you're in Florida? Whoo, you got a front row seat. Jerry says, are we getting a Princess Lilibet attraction? Well, no. Because <laughs> of the King Charles comment? Let's see here. Well, if you spent $2 on that, Jerry, I don't know if that was a troll or a genuine question, but... Uh, let's see here. Talon says, as a business person, Iger handled that meeting well. As a member of the LGBT community, I get it. It seems like Disney will always try and be a four quadrant. But, oh, I'm sorry that you feel alienated. But HBO doesn't have a theme park, Talon. I mean, HBO has a smaller appeal than Disney does. Disney is in a difficult position because they have to appeal to everybody. That's hard to do. But I do feel that there is a way to eventually appeal to everybody. You just have to do it right. And so you just have to get the right person, and I think they'll be able to do it. I think Disney needs to swap out some of their people, which they are in the process of doing. I like Disney's mission. I just don't think they've picked all the right people to do it. Danny says, did they address Ant-Man flopping? No, they did not. <laughs> Trace Hancock says, I know it's better late than never, but it does seem like it took Iger forever to finally align as an ally. Well, Trace, I think that they were waiting for this thing to come out to light. Honestly, I think they wanted to see how long it would take for them to recognize that they stripped Reedy Creek of all its powers. Um, you know, they took away from this new committee. I honestly feel that's why they were laying low. They were like, how long do you think it's going to take them to find this out? Ha <laughs> ha. And then now that it's out, you know, Bob Iger is becoming, and he, what he did today was extremely aggressive. Hey, Mega Man.
Ross says the younger generation really needs to vote now more than ever. I think that they are, though. The weird boy says you don't fight fascism by moderates. Florida just voted for the first Gen Z congressman who is a progressive. I don't agree. Uh, well, I don't like extremism on either side, that weird boy. And I think that, you know, you can't do anything if you're not elected. That's the most important thing to remember. You know, if you can't get elected, you know, and if you can't, if you can't get elected and if you can't get other politicians to work with you so that you can get stuff done, like, you know, AOC and her group can't get anything passed, you know, then, you know, that's not going to help either. Oh, political commentary. <laughs> I can't help it. I have to say it. Any other questions about this before we go to the open Q&A? Going once. No avatar news, Danny. Going twice. Ross says it's progressive extreme, though, maybe by Florida standards. It just seems strange as a European. But you guys are having the same problem in Europe, aren't you? Right? With, like, Brexit and stuff? Ah, uh, thanks, Nail in the Fashion. I like your photo. Didn't you change your, did you change your name? Ah, uh, thanks, Talon. Glad you guys are enjoying Unicorn Grace. <laughs> John Thrasher, I am not personally a member of the LGBT community, but I have friends in the community. I know so many of you in the community who I count as friends as well. So I guess friends in real life, friends online. Uh, and you guys have stuck, stuck by me. And, you know, I feel, uh, I, really, I'm, I, feel, I feel very close with you guys, and I will always be a very strong ally for you. Also, as you know, I hate injustice. I hate injustice. I can't stand it. I can't stand it. It just bothers me. I don't like seeing wrong done to anybody. I'm seeing the Mario movie tonight, John. All right, let's go on to the next. Let's go on to the Q&A. Hold on. Here it comes. Q&A time. We got 10 minutes. It's 416. You can ask me anything you'd like until 426, and then I'm going to be on time to go to this uh, M Mario movie. William Wallace says, I just saw fan art of Alexandra Daddario as Wonder Woman. I loved it. What would you think if you were cast as Wonder Woman? Ah, her time has passed, I'm sorry to say. Uh, I think that if she was cast as Wonder Woman, I would feel nobody wanted to be the character. I'm sorry. I'm very blunt sometimes. But, you know, you want an honest opinion. And I'm always willing to, I'm always open to discuss it, discussion and, and changing my mind. And also, I understand that situations are fluid. Jordan says, I personally love that Blue Beetle trailer, but you should not get any hate for stating your opinion. Ah, oh, thanks, Jordan. I don't think I was getting hate. And I felt bad that some people felt bad that I didn't like it. But, I mean, I didn't like it. I mean, I didn't hate it, but, I mean, I just thought it looked like a streaming movie to me. Jay King says, hey, Grace, Succession is back on track. Quick thoughts on episode two. Great stream so far. Ah, oh, thank you. Succession episode two was brilliant. I absolutely adored it. Uh, I thought that it was one of the best episodes that they ever had. It was not like night and day with the first episode. I guess they were just were indeed just ramping up, but I, I absolutely adored it. I thought it was phenomenal. Let's see here. <laughs> Cosmics, I'm not sneaking in any snacks into Super Mario. I don't know if Universal's going to give us free snacks or not. Let's see. Uh, but I don't know. Let me see. I'm a little popcorned out these days. Jake Van Norton says, will Nicholas Scratch be an Agatha? I haven't heard anything too much about that, but, you know, uh, potentially, but I'm not sure. Lloyd Lester says, Grace, the Academy announced the creation. Oh, yes, I saw that headline. I saw that of a new production and technology branch, which would include stunts. Uh, I wonder if those, I don't know if it's going to be in the awards category. I, don't, I mean, I don't know if they're going to be announced, having awards during the telecast, but I sure hope so. I really would love there to be a stunt category. The Brendan V says, who's your favorite Muppet, Grace? You know, I have to tell you, I like Kermit the Frog like everybody, but my favorite Muppets are the silly ones. I like Peppy the Prawn. I like um, Rizzo, you know, Rizzo a little bit because of New York, right? Uh, I also really like the Swedish Chef. I love doing the Swedish Chef, you know, doing the song, you know, the, you know, like, oh, it's so fun to do. And then I also really like Sam the Eagle. I think he's hilarious. I like the Sam the Eagle stuff. 
Uh, let's see here. Uh, Danny Boyd says, Grace, are you a classic popcorn and pop viewer? And is there any food sold in theaters that is like, really? Uh, a whole chicken in New York City? That's funny, Danny. I wish there was more. I go to the movies so often, I get really tired of the food that they serve there. So I wish that they had more uh, selections. Jerry J says, Grace, where could be another option for Disney? Where could Disney build? Like, they're not going to build somewhere else. They've invested too much money in Florida. That's why they're going to fight. That's why Disney's not going to back down because they've got four parks there. They have got multiple hotels. They own a ho whole bunch of land. Uh, they just can't leave. Ruben says, are you nervous at all for Gaga on the press tour for Joker 2? I am a little nervous. That's a good point, Ruben. Uh, she did a very bad job with her press tours. I think in every press tour that she's done, she said something stupid, unfortunately, that has what people have focused on instead of her work. And so I hope that she doesn't make that mistake again. Uh, hey, Devin. Where did that question go? Mm. Oh, it's my pleasure, Jordan. I'm very proud to be an ally. Where did that go? Uh, Kylie says, do you feel, still think Mario could make a billion? Let me see it, but I do feel very good about it. Uh, Gian, uh, Gian Quesadilla, is that your last name really, Quesadilla? I do like Quesadillas. Grace, have you heard HBO just greenlit the Egg and the Conqueror project? Uh, if, the, if the headline went up while I was here, I did not see it. Uh, 80s model, I did not like the second episode of season two of Yellow Jackets. I'm thinking of stopping watching it, but let me just see Elijah Wood. I think he seems interesting. Christina Ritchie is one of my favorite characters on the show, so I'm curious to see where that goes. But I have not been enjoying it. It's getting a little too weird for me. I'm with that teacher who was like, whoa. Sri Romeo says, hi, Grace. Who do you think is the most attractive Hollywood actor or actress? Uh, I abstain from that. Uh, you know, I think, you know, no, nobody, you, it's impossible to tell because it's a matter of opinion. Wound says, where did it go? Uh, oh, I love you too, Devin. Wound says, I don't like that they gave the scarab its own voice. It should have been, uh, Jolo's voice, uh, or everyone kept telling me how to pronounce this actor's name differently on the, my reaction video. But uh, argument, just like Young Justice portrayed it. Uh, argumentative, do you mean? Now Iron Man comparisons will be a plenty. It does seem very Iron Man-y, and it doesn't sound particularly alien either. Uh, I'm, I'm just, I, I didn't particularly like Blue Beetle ever, as I said in my trailer reaction, and I'm not particularly still liking him. Uh, I just don't, the character just didn't click with me. Dev, De, uh, Dev Deneo says, will you watch review Bo is Afraid? I sure will. I have my tickets to go see it. It opens a week early here. I want to see it on the IMAX screen, and I will review it before it opens wide. Uh, Danny, I did see that Anya Taylor-Joy is Princess Peach in the Mario doing the voice. I haven't heard anything about Dr. Doom as of late. I know, Juice. You know, he really seems to have dropped off the radar. Will Eckhoff says, have you seen the Snow White leaks? I saw them back in the day. Are there new ones? You know, I saw Camelot on Friday, and uh, I think, what is it, Anthony Burlap or, whatever, Burlap or whatever? The actor who played King Arthur, is in. he's the male lead in Snow White. I thought that was fascinating. He's very good. Juan Carlos says, the Disney World Muppet Show, that pre-show of Sam and Rizzo, Mr. Mickey Mouse and Rizzo just walking and dressed as Mickey. Yeah, I love that pre-show. I think that's one of the reasons I like... Uh, I like the Sam the Eagle jokes. Uh, Darwin Juarez says, please tell me you were wearing a little crown like the Mario movie. You would come. <laughs> That's very kind, Darwin. I'm glad. I'm, I, I appreciate uh, the Princess Peach love, uh, but I don't know if I, I, don't, I don't own any little crowns. That would be cute. I, also, I'd want to wear a Mario hat. I want to wear like the Mario hat with a G. Uh, Sander said, oh, hey, Sander. Thanks for coming back. Welcome back. Have a good walk. Michael McKenis. Uh, my parents are still considering getting a dog. I don't know how they're going to do it. I'm nervous about it, but I respect their decision either way. Ta we've never had a pet. I had a, I had a goldfish, but I've never had a pet that could actually w walk around. Tyler Rod says, would you like to see Iger run for the White House against DeSantis? Um, I think that Bob Iger was considering that at one point, but he decided not to run. Um, he has so much money, and he's already so set. I don't know if he needs that frustration and hate. 
Uh, but I think, you know, I think he would be a good candidate, potentially. But I don't know if we, how we feel. Mark Cuban also, I think, is a pretty good candidate. But I don't know how we feel about more business people running. Uh, Dev Deneo says, Grace, will you... Oh, I already answered that. Mm -hmm. Denzel O'Neill says, I should have a mustache as Mario? That would be hilarious. Oh, am I going to watch it a movie? <laughs> uh, I really want to go to that Toadstool Cafe. Uh, B, I hated Hereditary from Ari Aster, but I loved Midsommar. Let's see. Nathan says, is it true we're getting a Justice League New Frontier movie? Um... I don't want to directly spoil stuff for you, but I believe that a number of scoopers have talked about that, and that's a lot of smoke. Let's see here. Dane also does, does a, his boyfriend also is not liking the new yellow jackets. Oh, you're eating it up? You're eating it up, Dane, really? Let's see here. Juan, Juan Cruz, it's so good to see you. Uh, an Oakland Sir, I didn't watch Significant Other, but I do like Jake Lacey. I thought he was great on White Lotus. All right, so it's 425. Uh, let me do some shout outs. Official Liam G says, hey, Grace, how would you feel about Greta Gerwig directing Supergirl, Woman of Tomorrow? Let's see, as you said, let's see how Barbie does. I feel, I'm a little concerned she made Barbie a little bit too political. Uh, I think I have some concerns she might have tanked it. But let's see. I hope that's not the case. But I mean, let's see. I, what I heard from the press screening was, was scared me. <laughs> I was like, I, I'm surprised this was greenlit. And they were like, we are too. But it, it was. Sandra, I did see the extraction trailer. I felt a little bad I didn't react to it, but I was up so late last night covering Secret Invasion. There was no reason to release that trailer today. It was totally overshadowed, never trended, but it was an incredible trailer, and it was excellent, and I felt bad about it, that I didn't cover it. Pork chop, Polly, there is no Guardians hype. It's pretty scary. SMR Goose, you're in Orlando right now? I'm so jealous. I'm so jealous. I wish I was there. Thumbs up to you, too, Ajissa. So I'm just doing shout outs now. Spider-Verse trailer is tomorrow, Sonny, as I tweeted and they tweeted actually the other day. They moved it back a day. Danny's being lazy in Chicago. Archie, Archie, I loved your Paris photos of John Wick. You really did do the John Wick tour and I retweeted Archie's photos if you want to see them. And you looked great in them, Archie. Those were wonderful photos. You look like a really cool person. And I already said I loved Succession uh, episode two. That weird boy says, eating dessert after I broke my fast here in Egypt during Ramadan. Oh, that's interesting, that weird boy. That's so fascinating. It makes me see your political comment earlier in a totally different light than you're in Egypt, which, of course, has its own very interesting political situation. I hope that you're doing well, and I hope that the country is doing well. But it's very nice to hear from you. I love talking to someone from Egypt. That is so great. That's what I love about the Internet. Uh, Lucky Luke. Uh, Lucky Luke. Lucky Luke. Is that, is that the French comic? First time being a member on live chat. I wanted to take this opportunity to tell you how much I love you and how much I appreciate your support for all people, especially uh, the LGBT community. Thanks for the endless hours of wonderful entertainment. Oh, Lucky Luke, what a wonderful thing to say. And that's very generous of you. Oh, I'm glad you were able to uh, finally join as a member and be part of the stream. Hey, Foreign Fez. Let's see here. Uh, don't worry, Kyle. It's great to become involved. Let's see here. Nial says, editing YouTube videos while watching. Ah, I love it. That's very meta. Hey, Jose. Hugs to you in Miami. Hey, Joker45. Ah, oh, thanks, Josh. That means a lot to me that you're enjoying my video so much. Hello to you across the pond. Um, Dip Tuck Dive says, I saw Dungeons & Dragons yesterday. I loved it going back a second time. Oh, I can't. I'm going to see it again, too. I was supposed to see it again yesterday. But uh, something came up, so I'm going to see it this coming weekend. Hello to Brazil, Jander. Oh, I love Brazil. I've never been to Brazil. My father's been to Brazil. He's, he really loved it. Oh, Fabi, first day of vacation. Pretty sweet. Pretty sweet. Nabby, are you working? Working? Uh, wink, 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 wink. Let's see here. Uh, Danny says, Grace, you have a following similar to the, uh, those of Pop Divas. Ah, oh, that's a very nice thing to say. Uh, I have so much fun with you guys. You guys are so great. 
Uh, let's see here. Oh, here's something else from that weird boy in Egypt. My queerness made me appreciate progressive view more, specifically being queer in Egypt. Well, I can certainly understand that. This is my last day as a member. Ah, oh, thank you for being an ally. Oh, that's great, that weird boy. I'm so glad that you were able to, to, to be a member again. No problem. Don't worry about it. Churn away. Churn away. That's cool with me. Uh, and I'm really glad that we got to talk to you today. And stay strong. I'm sure that it is tricky, your situation in Egypt. And, um, you know, you have a lot of love here. Jake Eric McDermott says, Hey, Grace, watching with my boyfriend, Kester and Otto the dog. Ah, oh, what a pair. What a, what, a, what a team. What a team. And then Capes and Tight says, Getting into the summer movie spirit and have rewatched your Flash and Guardians trailer breakdowns today. Oh, I'm so glad. That makes me feel so nice that you rewatch them. That makes me feel really nice. Love to you too, Cosmics. All right, I better get going or I'm not going to be able to make my uh, Mario uh, movie. The embargo lifts tomorrow at 3. So tomorrow, tomorrow's a big day. Trump, there's the Trump craziness in New York, uh, you know, here in New York. Uh, there is definitely a Spider-Verse trailer. I told you I heard there's a Barbie trailer tomorrow as well. Uh, it's definitely coming out this week because I know it's going to theaters. Uh, and I heard it was tomorrow. Uh, and then also the Super Mario embargo lifts at uh, 3 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And I'm trying to do a spoiler review. And then I got to get up and do Mando on Wednesday. So um, uh, I, there probably will not be a stream tomorrow or Wednesday. So I think the streams for the rest of the week will be on Thursday and Friday. And I'm not even sure what I'm going to do about Friday's stream because of the Star Wars celebration. Maybe I'll cover some of that stuff in the live. Uh, Star Wars Celebration, the panels start uh, on Friday and Saturday, the big ones at 6 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. Three in the morning for California. That's craziness. All right, everybody, bye. Bye, everybody, bye. Bye, bye. And Sunday's Easter. I can't, I can't have an Easter stream. I'm working hard enough to try and get, there might not be a movie math on, Mon on Sunday either because it's Easter. So uh, let's see what happens. Uh, all right, everybody. Bye, 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 bye. Bye, 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 bye.